Hey guys, it's Dan, your host, Judean's Reviews, and today I'm back for another video for Fear the Walking Dead, and in today's video, we're going to be doing our overall series review for Fear the Walking Dead. Alright guys, this one's going to be doing another review today, this one's going to be doing another review for Fear the Walking Dead, and in today's video, we're going to be doing another video, this one is going to be our last ever full-on review for Fear the Walking Dead, where we're going to go through the series, we're going to talk about it, and give our thoughts. So, a lot of you guys wanted me to go ahead and do a overall series review for Fear of the Walking Dead, and I was going to do it this week, but I kind of decided, I was like, you know what, we'll actually save it for the next Sunday. Um... So that we still have a review. Now, obviously, if you're not aware, uh, next Sunday and every Sunday going forward now, because there is no Walking Dead Universe content on, we will be doing the Let's Chit Chat videos on Sundays going forward. So that's just a bit of an, an update for you guys uh, that watched uh, yesterday's video. So, um, yeah, now let's go through, of course, Fear the Walking Dead as a show. Not to mention, I needed this week to honestly gather my thoughts, really think about what I wanted to say, really think about the overall series rating out of 10 that I would give this because this is a big deal honestly this show has been one of the most up and down journeys I've ever watched mostly down unfortunately but there have been some highs as well too and we are going to acknowledge both of those in this video so um overall what did I think of Fear the Walking Dead as a spin-off series to the original Walking Dead I think it's an actual embarrassment I'm gonna I'm gonna start with that okay and here's the thing this is why I say it's an embarrassment the original Walking Dead series is amazing. I love the 11 seasons of the original series. When you bring in something like Fear, it's a risk because it's a spinoff to something so good. And for a time there, it was just kind of a mediocre spinoff, if you ask me. Then you got into like season four, season five, and it really started to become embarrassing that it was connected to, to the original Walking Dead. I don't know if that's just me, but it felt kind of embarrassing that it was it was connected at times. So, um, with that being said, Fear of the Walking Dead over time, at least in my opinion, with besides a few, you know, like season six episodes and stuff, it got worse and worse over time. And it did not get better. The writing got worse. The logic was just not there, and the show overall just got worse and worse, you know, over time. Um, to a point where in the final season, they started resurrecting characters just to get some viewers for their final season. So, you know, point being, this show definitely got really desperate. It definitely, the quality did not, you know, was not good. It, it was not good enough to sustain eight seasons at a lot of times. Um, now, in terms of this show as a spinoff series for The Walking Dead, I don't think it works. I think Walking Dead already this year has actually proven that they know how to make spinoffs. They know how to make a show like Dead City. They know how to make a show like Daryl Dixon. Hopefully the ones who live as well too. But this show right here is not a good spinoff. Those are good spinoffs. Dead City, Daryl Dixon, and probably ones who live. This is not a good spinoff. This is a show that should never have ever happened. As long as they stayed in this vision, this should have never happened. The only way that this show should have remained the way it was is if Dave Erickson continued his vision with the show. I would have rathered, and I'm not even joking, that they canceled this show after season three if that's how bad it was going to get with the new showrunners. And I sp I really, really mean that as well. Dave Erickson was the original showrunner of Fear, and he did the seasons for the first three. He did the first three seasons, which a lot of people regard as the best Fear of the Walking Dead seasons. For the most part, I would agree. And then after that, we went to season four all the way to season eight with Ian and Andrew, the brand new showrunners, and they made the show unbearable at a lot of times. And they completely took the vision away from the original intent that Dave Erickson had for the show, which was following a group that over time become a evil group. That's what the original concept was for Fear, in particular Madison, you know. And it would have been a really, really cool kind of, you know, becoming evil type of storyline for The Walking Dead, which would have served as a good spinoff. And it would have worked well as its own thing. But unfortunately... These two new showrunners had the need to cross over Morgan, cross over Dwight, cross over Sherry, and completely take the vision away from Fear the Walking Dead, which is very, very ridiculous. Now, here's what I'd say about every season overall about this show, just kind of an overall thoughts. 
Season one, I think, is a pretty darn good season. It's not perfect, but it is a good season. I think that the only thing about this season I don't like is episode four. I think that one is pretty pointless at a lot of times. Um, but I love seeing the breakout of LA. I love seeing everything, you know, kind of, you know, go down. Um, it's a very exciting outbreak. It's something that we never got to see in the original Walking Dead. So it's definitely something cool to kind of get a point of view of. Um, I think that, you know, over time, the Walking Dead spinoffs have outdone this outbreak, in particular with the Daryl show. But I think for its time, this was definitely the best we had for a Walking Dead outbreak in the universe, for sure. Um, and it was really good, you know. Now, season two, I think, was a little bit of a weaker season, as I've said many times before. I know a lot of people will probably disagree with that. I think season two was definitely weak in some areas, especially when you had a whole bunch of episodes where they're on a boat and they'll stop for an episode and they'll run into a family and then they'll leave and the episode has no purpose, you know. Same thing with like, you know, Connor's group and Jack's group. You know, they stop there for a few episodes, a little bit of a hiccup. But for the most part, nobody really suffers in the end. Like, our group is fine. So, it just, it, it definitely a lot of filler for sure. I also didn't find that Celia worked all that well as a villain. I just didn't really like her too much. Alejandro as well too with, you know, like the whole I'm bit type of thing. And then you find out, oh no, he isn't. Now he's really bit. Now he's really dying. Like, you know, it, it just, there was a lot of really goofy storytelling. I think the only thing I really enjoyed was the Travis and Chris storyline. I think that was well, well told for sure. And where it ended up, for sure, is, is definitely one of the best things about this show. So, season two, it's not, like, offensively bad. I just don't like it that much, I'm going to be honest. Um, I think there are way more seasons of The Walking Dead universe that are better than that. Um, now, season three, a lot of people say, is the best season of Fear of the Walking Dead. I would agree with that. I would definitely agree that season six is, is definitely the best season in terms of storytelling, in terms of characters, in terms of what they do. Problem is with it, as I think it is severely overrated. <laughs> That's the main thing. I think it's severely overpraised. People talk about it like it's God tier. I'm like, guys, I'm sorry, but I don't see why it's God tier. I really don't. I don't see why Travis getting killed in a helicopter in a stupid way, flying out there like that, after having an amazing arc with losing his son. Not to mention, Madison in the second half just ends up teaming with uh, teaming up with the guy that is responsible for her husband's death. And she just backs him up. She's just buddies with Walker. Like, I feel like people overlook that, which is ridiculous. But, like, she's friends with the guy that gave the orders to kill this guy. <laughs> you know, to shoot that helicopter down. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if that really was realistic, Madison would never surrender to Walker. She would never forgive Walker because he is the moron that killed her husband. You know what I mean? So... I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, the writing for, I guess I'll use that as an example. The writing is not perfect. Although it is still a good season. I like Walker. I like what he does with, you know, the intimidation, the whole, you know, I want you off the ranch by this certain time because of this and laws are being brought into it. It's, it's really cool. Um, not to mention, Troy Otto is a very entertaining character. He's definitely what makes this season fun because he's so unpredictable. You don't know what he's going to do next, you know? Um, and again, I think Daniel Sharman is a great actor. Again, it's a shame what they did with him in season eight, but I think he's really, really good in this season. And the Proctors are a cool villain group, you know, as well, too. Got a lot of walkers, got a lot of deaths. Certain uh, deaths I agree with this season. Certain deaths I don't agree with this season. Kind of a mix of both, I would say. But overall, it's a really, really good season. Like I said, it's overrated, but it's a really good season. Season four. Okay, now this is when the show just absolutely lost its vision. It lost it and it threw it away. Um, I don't understand what the hell they were trying to do here. I really don't. And you know what's funny? Morgan's crossover, I was not against at all. When I saw the first few episodes of season four, I really liked the crossover. I liked seeing Morgan crossover and interacting with Nick and, you know, interacting with Alicia and interacting with the Fear of the Walking Dead crew. It's really cool. It is. It's really cool. And I honestly would have liked it if it was for a limited one season thing. And then he takes off and he goes back home, you know? I'm fine with catching the Fear group up to our Walking Dead timeline. I'm fine with Morgan going to Fear. I don't think there's an issue there at all. It's the the fact that he took over the show and they killed Madison in order for him to take over the show. That's when I had a problem with it. Also, Nick's death, look, I know the actor wanted to leave, but you could have done that in a way better fashion than they did it there. I do not like his death at all. I do enjoy what they do with the stadium, how it's like you've got the one timeline, which is after the fact, and then the timeline at the stadium, and you have to kind of figure out how things got the way they did. It's it's really cool. It's like a puzzle. You know what I mean? It, it's really, really good. So in terms of a, an idea and creativity, I think it's there for sure. 
but it really messed up the vision of the show, especially when they killed Madison in the way they did. And I know people say, well, they didn't kill Madison. Well, in my eyes, they did. They confirmed it on Talking Dead. Kim Dickens left the show for many years, and then they randomly asked her to come back to, conc uh, to conclude the series. You know what I mean? So I don't really see that as a fake out. I see that as an actual character death, and then they changed their minds, you know? So, yeah. And then the second half with Martha and, you know, the whole gray filter and helping people. And I mean, it just, it got so horrendous. I mean, it, that right there might be the worst part of the show Four B. Oh my God, man. Like literally besides episode 10, some things in episode 10, that half is an absolute write off. If you ask me, there's nothing I like about it. So, and I know a lot of people quit the show around that time and I can't blame them to be honest. It's terrible. Um, now season five. Okay. So this season to me is overhated. I know that's going to sound crazy. It is an overhated season, although it's a pretty bad season. <laughs> you know, people call it the worst season. I disagree with that. I think it's one of them, but you know, I like the first few episodes. The first few episodes are not that bad. If you ask me, you know, with the Humbugs Gulch, Dwight and John, the radiated walkers. Again, at that time, it was a new concept and I think they did a good job introducing it. Not to mention... A lot of great action. Alicia was at the top of her game. You know, you had Daniel coming back. You had CRM connections. Like, they did a really good job with the first few episodes, at least in my in my eyes and at least in my opinion. Um, here's where the season kind of goes to crap, though. I think by the time you get to episode six and they're rebuilding a plane based off of a kid's book and you got floating beer balloons in the sky okay that's what you know that's when it gets bad um and pretty much after that they don't recover i mean there's a few moments like i think episode 10 is an okay episode you know you get like some dwight stuff letting that guy go in return of what daryl did for him like there are good moments um but the season kind of goes to crap after that but i think season five is overhated i don't think it's a irredeemable piece of crap you know but it's not the greatest season but I do think it's the tiniest bit um, overhated, is what I would say. Now, season six is when the show, quote unquote, ba uh, bounced back. Now, in my opinion, it bounced back for about a half season, maybe. I think season six B is a little bit of a, you know, kind of a, a rough patch is, is kind of how I look at it. The first half with Morgan, with, you know, the bottle episodes, the one with Dwight and, uh, you know, Althea, the one with John and the investigation... Dwight and Sherry reunion, Morgan, you know, being becoming a bounty hunter for crying out loud. You know, they did a lot of really good things in the first half. And I think the first half, if I had to give a Walking Dead universe half my number one spot, I think that would be it. 6A is probably my favorite part of Fear of the Walking Dead. Um, I think season three is the best season, but I think 6A is probably the best, you know, overall half uh, in terms of just direction, in terms of writing, in terms of, you know, non-cringeworthy dialogue. I think that's probably the best one. But season 6B is not good. You kill John Dory in a very premature way. You have a really, really odd conclusion to the Pioneers, if you ask me. You have, you know, the cult with Teddy, which I think is, is relatively good. But again, there's some very, you know, wonky things here and there, but it's, it's mostly good. But again, there's a lot of episodes I don't like from the second half. I don't like episode 15. I don't like, you know, some of these other episodes. Episode 10 with Daniel's memory loss. I'm just not into that. You know, there's a lot of episodes that I just am not big on while others I really like. Like JD, you know, introducing John Dory Sr. Really cool idea. But, you know, again, it's, it's kind of a wishy-washy season, I'd say. And then season 7, I think, is the king of the crap. I mean, seriously. Like, this season, you've got Victor Strand being a villain out of nowhere, which, again, they could have made it work, but the writing was not good. He's capturing babies. He's, you know, trying to one-up Morgan on every little thing. It just, it didn't really work at all. Um, Not to mention, they tried this whole bottled-off episode, you know, trope, like they did in season 6, because they saw that it worked. And in this season, I don't think it works good at all, you know? Most of the time, our characters are out there in this radiation with these masks on. You can't tell what the hell they're saying. And you gotta turn on subtitles, and even then, it's like, it's annoying. The visuals are not good. The overall, you know, character decisions are not good. The writing is not good. They butchered Alicia in this season. They resurrect Madison after getting rid of Alicia on the show. Like, it's just, it's not a good season. It doesn't work at all. It just, no. It's, it's absolute trash i hate to say it and then finally season eight uh in terms of this season in terms of what i can say about it it's mostly almost as bad as season seven for me at least the only thing that's better and what makes it better is that visually it's a lot better and i think that you know troy has some charisma 
But, like, aside from that, like, Padre is just as trash as any Season 7 group. Um, you know, they're not good at all. Their backstory's trash, in my opinion. And Troy Otto returning just felt like a desperate move from the writers. It really did. And I found that they wrote his character pretty poorly there in the end. Um, and I just didn't really like it. The only thing Season 8 has also going for it over Season 7 is that we did actually get the reunion between Madison and Alicia. I'll give them that one. But that's it. Like, that's the only really thing that makes it better. But not by much. Season 8, in my opinion, is the second worst season that they've ever done. You know, so in terms of just overall, in terms of the writing, in terms of what I've seen, and, you know, in terms of the eight seasons overall, how do I rank this? How do I, you know, kind of look at this objectively here? Um, you know, obviously the characters are definitely a huge impact in this. You know, Madison, Strand, Alicia, Nick. Uh, Troy, Daniel, uh, you know, I think I, yeah, I mentioned Strand, you know, like these are characters that I think for the most part, they have a connection with the viewers. You know, a lot of people have a connection to these characters as do I with certain ones. Um, over the seasons, I think certain characters got messed up like Alicia, like Strand, like, you know, Daniel at times, and then certain ones bounced back and then certain ones didn't. And then certain ones got worse. So Overall, I know this is going to sound like a low rating, but this is the best I can do for this show because there's so many bad seasons compared to the good seasons, but there are good seasons here and there. But again, certain ones kind of go to crap when you see the writing, right? So for me, I'm going to go for a three, three and a half is a good rating. Three and a half out of 10 is what I'm going to give Fear of the Walking Dead. It's not a great show. It's not great at all. It's honestly far from it. It's embarrassing that it's a spinoff to the Walking Dead universe, to be fully honest. But I don't think the ending for this show was offensively bad. I think season three is solid, overrated, but, you know, solid season. Season six, first half, I genuinely really like. And, you know, a few things in the second half. Overall, though, it it, it, it doesn't, no, it, it's not a good show. It's not a good show. A lot of it goes in a really rough direction, especially the way that they resurrect, like, Madison and Troy in the final half just to you know, just to make it enjoyable for fans, just to make them come back, even though they mess it up even more. Like, yeah, no, I have to only give this a three and a half. It's the highest I can do for a show like this. I hate to say it, but anyway, let me know in the comment section below. What are your opinions on fear? What do you think about the show overall as a product? Is it an, is it a embarrassment to the walking dead universe? Let me know in the comment section below, or do you think it's a great series and you love it? Let me know. So if you're new to the channel and you enjoy videos like this, make sure to click the subscribe button to not miss any other videos of The Walking Dead. Be sure to follow me on Dan's The Walking Dead Reviews and Instagram, guys. And of course, I'll see you guys really soon for more videos of The Walking Dead Universe. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and peace out.